Hey, it's Mike here, and today, is veganism a religion? Just a couple days ago, a Joe Rogan clip was posted under the title, Veganism is a Religion, and I wanted to talk about this for a while, so I figured, why not now? In Joe's video, him and his guests are not just talking about why they think veganism is a religion, they also essentially call it a gang with roving gang members around the internet, and they also perpetuate some basic myths and some new ones, such as getting the origin stories of veganism wrong, so let's have some fun and respond to this, let's go. So the video starts with a pretty inaccurate claim about the origins of modern veganism by his guest. Bring it up again about veganism coming from a religion. Yeah, veganism started um, with the Seventh Adventist Church, I believe. The guy that led the church as part of the, the church was like, you know, they were following the Jewish kosher laws or whatever at first. And then the guy just said, like, it just sort of took it to a next level and said, like, no, no meat, no animal products at all. It does, you know, it does seem like a religion. Well, the Seventh Day Adventists have given us a lot of good research and population data, they do not appear to be the origin of modern veganism. The term vegan was coined by Donald Watson in 1940s England, and Watson was actually an agnostic. In other words, this modern veganism that we are talking about was created by a person who ascribed to the idea that you should not believe something unless there are scientific grounds to believe it, at least according to Thomas Huxley's definition of agnostic, and he coined the term. So we have a non-religious origin of modern veganism, and just a fun side note, Pythagoras appears to have been a vegan, and not outwardly for religious reasons, from Eudoxus's writings, quote, he not only abstained from animal foods, but even kept his distance from cooks and hunters. In other words, he may have been the first smug vegan. I wanna mention that Bite Size Vegan has some great videos on veganism and history and religion. And yeah, there are some Eastern religions like Jainism that have veganism as a component, but veganism itself does obviously not rely on any religion. In fact, a lot of vegans are atheist. And one might say, yeah, they're atheist, but veganism is their religion. So let's take a look at the definition of religion. From Merriam-Webster, does veganism fit this? Quote, the service and worship of God or the supernatural or the commitment or devotion to religious faith or observance. It's very clear that the definition of a bona fide religion hinges on the idea of the supernatural or faith. This is clearly not the case with veganism. And obviously, as with any group, there's gonna be some individuals that ascribe to inaccurate beliefs, which could be interpreted as faith. Like there's probably some vegan out there who renamed himself Bumbato and thinks he can get half of his energy by eating sunlight. Let me, let me check real quick. Oh, we got some good sunlight today. Oh, that tastes good. Oh, it's a good day to be Bumbato, not Calvin like I used to be. Those are Calvin's personal beliefs and have nothing to do with veganism. And looking to the definition that is commonly used for veganism to reduce harm as much as is practically possible, it is scientifically verifiable that stopping eating animal products reduces harm to animals. It's not faith. And because I know somebody's gonna comment along this vein, no, just because something is practiced religiously does not make it a religion. People drink Starbucks religiously, they exercise religiously, they study for school religiously, not religions. Now, Joe mentioned similarities between veganism and religions to support his case, but it's pretty obvious that just because something has a quality that a religion also has does not make it a religion. For example, Joe points to how veganism is like a religion because vegans proselytize, and in case you weren't sure, proselytizing is when you you go out and you try and convert people to your belief system, like Mormons at your door, for example. Well, you know, so. they're proselytizing. I mean, that's that's a big part of this whole community. Is it's there's the moral high ground they stand on it, and then a lot of these people, especially people with vegan in their name and their screen name, they always go <laughs> after people. Yeah. Simply put, there are so many non-religious belief systems that go out and proselytize to try and change people's minds. Obviously, they're not religions. I can't help but think of any civil rights campaign throughout history. You know, canvassing, getting out there, proselytizing, changing people's minds was necessary to end segregation, for example. I can imagine somebody being like, oh, those civil rights activists are always trying to proselytize. They're like a religion. No, they're just trying to change your crappy beliefs, which are verifiably harmful and if everybody stays silent within society, society never evolves for the better. And as Joe even admits before 10 more critical points about veganism. What they're doing is, in many ways, is a very good thing. They're not participating in factory farming, right? They're not participating in the horrors that we see in these f***ing PETA videos where you see 
cows and pigs and chickens that are just yeah. being tortured. All that f that is disgusting. And that should be eliminated and shouldn't be a part of modern culture. And for a more contemporary example, we have environmental activists. Are they going out there and proselytizing for the religion of fighting climate change and reducing pollution? No, these people are simply trying to avert the disaster of having an inhospitable planet and their beliefs are based off scientifically verifiable facts, just like veganism is. You know, whether it's from an ethical perspective, we have verifiable numbers on the amount of animals that are killed and forcibly impregnated every year. From a health perspective, we have a slew of peer-reviewed studies showing lower disease rates. We also have that lower mortality and so on. And from an environmental perspective, the leading driver of rainforest destruction is animal agriculture. It's likely the main driver of species extinction from this study. It's a massive emitter of carbon dioxide and it uses an exorbitant amount of of water, land, and grain. This isn't pointing at a deity in the sky, this is pointing at the data. Still on the topic of proselytizing, back to the other dude. I, I get called out a lot on, on Instagram and stuff like that from people that are vegan saying like, I can't believe you do this and blah, blah, but I would never go on their page and say anything to them at all. Vegans or people are saying this stuff to you because your habits are verifiably destructive. I have a whole video on how diet is not a personal choice. Simply put, a diet with animal products has an unnecessarily large impact on others in terms of how it affects the planet. And diet is definitely not a personal choice if it has a victim. And now for the most extreme possible example where I am just comparing the logic and not equating the crime. Of course pedophiles are not gonna be mad at people for not molesting children. Makes sense? Of course the conversation gets into the realm of anatomical claims. But if you try to say that people are not herbivores, or that people are herbivores rather, and that we're not omnivores, you're crazy. It's just not true. It's not fact. And they show picture, these are not the teeth of a uh, carnivore. These are the teeth. We're, we're yeah. not carnivores, stupid. We're omnivores. They and show you the intestines and everything. Yeah, we, we look real similar in our teeth to fucking chimps. Mm. Chimps are omnivores. He throws up a major straw man here saying that vegans are arguing that we're not carnivores, therefore we're herbivores, and ignore the idea that we're omnivores in the middle. Well, no, the actual idea is that we do not have the anatomy of other omnivores. Vegans do look at this. I talk about this in a couple videos. My particular argument is that we just never anatomically adapted to eating a calorically significant amount of meat. I mean, it clogs our arteries after all, and heart disease is our leading killer. And there are so many other anatomical features that I go into. But one that just amazes me here is that he says we have the same teeth as chimps. First of all, we don't. Second of all, they eat about 2% meat, 3% meat of their total diet. But perhaps the most important point here is that when used as an excuse to not be vegan, it really is just an appeal to nature fallacy. If you truly think we're omnivores and can choose to eat all plants, then why not? And if you don't think that's the case, then you're saying we are obligate carnivores, which goes back to a straw man argument in the beginning. So here's the, here's the deal. If you wanna call us omnivores, you have to call us crappy omnivores. But really this whole argument is on the foundation that vegans are omnivores, so they're eating against their anatomy and therefore veganism is wrong. But looking back to those Seventh-day Adventists who happen to be a mine of vegan data, they had that 15% lower mortality, 78% lower diabetes risk, way lower hypertension and other diseases, and the list goes on. Funny, he has no science backing the notion that vegans are less healthy. It is merely an opinion, or should I call it faith? Oh, and Joe never ceases to amaze me. Oh, this next point here. The meat, the protein. You say, well, broccoli has 15 grams of protein. <laughs> it's not as bioavailable, you f And you know it's not. It's not as good as the, the protein that you get from meat. It's just not. He again shoots right to a straw man with how vegans rely on broccoli for protein. A, a broccoli man. And plant protein is inferior. What What is this, the 70s? Plants contain all the essential amino acids, all of them, and especially in higher amounts in legumes. What, like the tyrosine in plants is worse than the tyrosine in meat? It's just magical meat tyrosine? No. And once again, a public service announcement that according to this study, vegans had higher levels of blood protein, free protein as defined by serum albumin. All those animals eaten for protein 
and you still have lower protein levels. Really, plant protein would be the superior protein because it doesn't come in a package of a bunch of horrible, crappy stuff. You know, you don't have that cholesterol or really high saturated fat content. You don't have that probably carcinogenic heme iron if it's red meat or maybe the mercury if it's fish and so forth. I'll tell you what, Joe, go up to Olympic weightlifter and vegan Kendrick Ferris and, and tell him that plant protein is inferior. He holds a U.S. Olympic weightlifting record. Maybe next time he's doing the clean and jerk, just go up, just go up and tell him. Joe, of course, never ceases an opportunity to rag on what the health. And the real problem is people that watch a movie like What the Health or something and then think, well, that... This is, oh my God, I'm killing myself by not being a vegan. No, you need to d Google what the health debunked. What they've done is make a vegan proselytizing movie. But I do think there's a really important point here, and that is even if you do think that what the health or other groups of vegans or vegans in particular are exaggerating particular claims, the majority of the information is still valid. The fact of the matter is these leading killing diseases can and are being reversed on a whole food vegan diet and the peer reviewed literature backs that. Furthermore, any exaggerations in what the health are a far cry from the exaggerations that Joe makes in terms of, say, plant sentience. Because they don't move? Oh, they must be stupid. Mm -hmm. But they're in some way communicating with each other in a method that we don't totally understand. Yeah. Which f***s vegans hard. Yeah, right, right. That whole self-righteousness and all the craziness that comes along with being a vegan and oh, cruelty-free. Yeah. Not to those screaming plants <laughs> that you can't hear. <laughs> He regularly pulls out the plants suffer card when trying to dissuade people from going vegan. And this really is an appeal to futility fallacy. He's saying that your efforts to reduce suffering are futile because plants suffer anyway, completely ignoring the fact that animals eat a ton of plants and animals do for sure absolutely suffer. So every which way you look at it, a vegan diet is better in terms of this. And Happy Healthy Vegan happened to have very recently released a video on Joe Rogan and his beliefs around plant suffering. So go and check that out after this. He then has a little anecdote party, talks about vegans that failed. And a lot of these people, they give up. A lot of these people, they get to a point where their health can't take it anymore right. and they f***ing give up. Chris Kresser, he's yeah. a perfect example. Yeah, I, I don't know, Cafe Gratitude? Gratitude? Yeah, yeah, I know Cap about the yeah. yeah, these people were, I mean, their f***ing health was falling apart. So they decided mm. to raise their own cattle and eat their own meat. And vegans found out they got death threats. Of course, I do have a video on Chris Kresser's claims and Cafe Gratitude. And I do have to say that it seems when millions of people fail on their omnivorous diet, they don't blame the diet. Then when people hear about a few vegans failing on their diet, Diet, the diet is completely flawed. And I just have to say, I have yet to see somebody who has failed on a vegan diet who has actually gone to a plant-based nutritionist. Let me know if I'm wrong. I'm vegan warrior. This is vegan prince. I'm the vegan defender. They're fucking morons yeah. who joined a gang. This is not kindness and, you know, this is not someone who's compassionate. These are fucking cunts yeah. that are in a gang and that they're in the plant gang. Do I need to go into the definition of gang now? Fine, an organized group of criminals. You better not hurt those animals, bruv. By the way, follow me on beating blokes and saving animals on Twitter. But there is an interesting point to be made here, and I've made it before, that if you can make out vegans to be the worst possible people, then you're a better person by not going vegan. You're in the right. And so if vegans are criminals, they're in gangs, they're ridiculous and constantly doing you wrong, and everybody hates them, then yeah, it's fine to not be vegan. And obviously they're not calling them criminals, but they are applying the association here. But I would always recommend eat free range eggs. You're not hurting a chicken. Nothing gets hurt. It is free food. We have, I have chickens, they roam around, they eat vegetables, nobody eats them. Eggs are healthy as f Surprise, surprise, I have a whole video on backyard chickens, but the idea here is that when you create an exploitative relationship, the idea that there's gonna be no suffering is simply delusional. I do know somebody that decided to do backyard hens because they thought it would be way more ethical and then pretty soon their dog is shredding a few of the chickens and they for some reason got some male chickens so now they're also eating fertilized eggs. And another Joe Rogan video talks about that. Uh, you ever crack an egg and there's a little uh, chicken in there? You never no, had that I've never had that. I've had no, I've had like a like little, little gross. Almost, really? Yeah, not like a full chicken. Really cool life. They get to wander around. Occasionally they get jacked by coyotes. Really? I've had a uh, three, two, at least two. Yeah, he has backyard chickens and a coyote shredded at least two of them. 
You're also getting them from breeders that kill the males and they have the innate suffering from accelerating their breeding system by 20 times. That means the egg binding, the osteoporosis from mineral leaching. And from this study, a third of the hens over two had ovarian cancer. And all of that just so you can eat the most cholesterol dense food in the modern diet. I just think that it's a, one of the most karma free things. Uh, there's this, this thing, new thing called veganism, and he does, to his credit, point out how dairy is unnatural. If you want to get rid of dairy and you don't want, I, I get it, man. I've seen dairy, dairy farms. It's f***ed up. You see what they're doing to cows and they, they you know, what, the way they, they treat them and the way they raise them and just the whole idea behind it, like making them lactate. The only time cows <laughs> lactate is when they have a baby, yeah. right? So they keep them in this state and it's just, it's unnatural. For the sake of argument, let's just explore the idea here that Joe Rogan is actually practicing religious carnism. I mean, after all, he's proselytizing that people should eat meat. It's not as good as the, the protein that you get from meat. It's just not. He relies on supernatural beliefs to justify this. Yeah. Not to those screaming plants <laughs> that you can't hear. And relies on anecdotal stories just like in the case of religious texts. There's some, some people that own that restaurant in... On the fifth day, Cafe Gratitude owners the angle heart collapsed into the sand and saith unto me, From this point oneth, we shall no longer be vegan, for my body is weak, and my mind is filleth with fallacies. <clears throat> And zooming out, I would just say for the sake of argument that as society, we have somewhat of a religious exploitation of animals. We have the rituals and the traditions such as rodeos and circuses and that yearly barbecue where people are killing and roasting animals. In the end, the video is just a couple of dudes sitting there complaining about vegans and making a bunch of claims that are just verifiably incorrect to justify their own habits. No, veganism does not fit in the definition of a religion. It is not ascribed to supernatural things, it is not faith-based, and it was founded in science and still follows that to this day. All right, that's it for today. Special thanks to Rowie for sending me that Rogan video on Facebook. Yes, I do have a Facebook in case you didn't know. And yes, I also completely rely on video ideas from you guys, so keep them coming. And I also have a Patreon, so I really want to thank my Patreon contributors, because without you, I could not be doing this, especially to the extent that I am. And guys, let me know down below what you think about all this religion stuff and veganism, and feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh, turn your gaze, my disciples. It is the messianic martyr of carnism, ex-vegan Chris Cresser. By the way, follow me on Peace, Love, and Vegan on Instagram. Follow me at Flogging Carnist, Saving Barn Animals at Twitter, at Brass Knuckles Animal Sanctuary, at Eat the Meat, I'll Give You Cement Feet on Instagram. Hashtag SeaWorld Sucks.